The two Democrats are battling over a securely Democratic state Senate seat, and the race could extend to the November election. Joining me with what this race means for the Democratic Party in San Diego and beyond are political science professors Thad Kauser from UC San Diego and Carl Luna of Mesa College. And Thad, now Tony Atkins will term out of the assembly at the end of this year. Is she breaking any rules by uh, running against fellow Democrat and incumbent Marty Block? Well, Ronald Reagan called this the 11th commandment, thou shall not attack your own party, but but even he broke it when he ran against Gerald Ford in 1976. So, so no, there's no one owns a seat and there's no commandment against an in-party challenge. This happens every so often, but it does bring a lot of internal strife within the party and, and brings unwanted attention and too much money going to something that's only not going to change the partisan balance in the state. Because in this particular case, Marty Block uh, looks like he was going to get that Senate seat anyway. It's a strongly Democratic seat. It's just a question of which of these two moderate to liberal Democrats would be representing that area. So when it comes to policies then in these moderate uh, Democratic <laughs> de Democrats, how different are they? Not very different. They'll probably vote the same way on just about every bill. Now, Marty Block has a reputation of being a leader on higher education issues, Tony Atkins on a lot of LGBT issues, and so they'll have different emphasis, but, but really you're getting the same type of senator no matter who wins this race. Now, Carl, do you agree with that? Do you think this is an unusual race and you think you're getting kind of two of the same? Yeah, it, it, uh, totally. Uh, if you take a look at it, you've only had like three cases where an assemblyman's taken on and, and, and a senator from their own party and they lost each time. You had a state assembly speaker take on the governor back in the 60s, uh, Governor uh, Pat Brown, and he lost. So yeah, this doesn't usually happen unless it's a challenge on ideological reasons. It's like from the right or the left attacking a more centrist. And as that said, there's not a lot of daylight between both Marty Block and Tony Atkins' positions. Carl, what kind of short-term effect do you think this could have on the liberal politics here in San Diego? Well, it hurts San Diego in that if Marty Block gets replaced, you lose seniority in the Senate for four years, and eventually you recapture it you know, four years from now. Uh, it means that still no one is going to run for mayor in San Diego, in a city that is moving progressively purple to blue in a presidential year when there should be a big Democratic turnout. There's no real reason locally for Democrats to turn out other than the city attorney's race. Uh, you're going to spend a lot of money on something that you already own. So it's kind of like rebuying something that you sold off at an auction, and, and that doesn't make a lot of sense. And it could damage Tony Atkins, even if she wins this seat, it, it uh, could haunt her if she wants to run for statewide office later on. So let's talk about that a little bit, Thad. So first of all, going back to the mayor's seat, mm -hmm. it, was there an issue with with uh, why? Do we know why Tony doesn't want to run for this seat? And, and what sort of jeopardy does this put the seat in? Well, I think the reason that no one on the Democratic side is stepping up to run for this mayor race, no, no Todd Gloria, no Tony Atkins, is because they, right now they don't think they can win it. They see a mayor who's fairly popular, hasn't had enough time to make any mistakes or enemies, has done some good things and is still riding high in the polls, has a lot of money. But that seems to, I agree with Carl that there's a, a lack of political imagination that, that a year from now in a high water Democratic year, they can't win that seat. They can't get a top competitor for one of the plumbest prizes, mayorship of the second biggest city in California. That is surprising. Well, let's talk about this because this isn't the only place in town where there's a, a, an inter-party fight going on in Northern California, the 17th Congressional District. Um, they're also having a similar situation. So what's going on there? And does this point to a, a larger problem in the Democratic Party? Well, so this, this seat in Northern California where incumbent Mike Honda is running again against insurgent Ro Khanna, who does represent a, a different constituency, more of the new tech money in the, in the Silicon Valley. That fight and this fight are symptoms of where we are as a state. We're becoming an increasingly blue state. And that means most of the big fights are not between the two parties. We just saw a governor's race that was basically uncontested. We're about to see a U.S. Senate race that will almost be uncontested. The fights are within the party, within that blue party, to see whose political ambitions will be served. And coming back to that note, Carl, given the election rules, the, the two top vote getters can move on, will move on to the general election. So this means that Adkins and Block could continue on to November spending money. How much money do these candidates, do you think, will need to spend to fight for the state Senate seat? Well, Tony Atkins already has a war chest over $800,000, so you could be looking at her spending somewhere in the seven figures. Marty Block, who wasn't anticipating spending that much, is going to have to raise that money. And in a world of limited money with a presidential race, every dollar that goes there is a dollar less to go to other races around the state and at the national level. All right, I'm sure we'll be following this as we approach November. Carl Luna and Thad Kauser, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for having me.